Hey there everybody and welcome back for the final video of REM2. I'm going to try to wrap things up today and thankfully we don't actually have a lot of puzzles left to solve, just a few that we've been putting off. That's the good news. The bad news is that we've actually got a lot of back and forthing to do for this last section. So that's going to be kind of tedious but just stick with it uh, and we'll be done here before long. Hopefully it won't take a long time. I don't think it'll be terribly bad, but uh, yeah, let's start things off here with the underground railway system because we haven't been here in a long time and we've got some stuff to check out. What we have been looking for the entire time before coming to this section has been these four blue pieces and now that we've got all four of them, we can now tackle the end game. The first thing that we need to follow up on is that combination lock at the very end of the left side track and I need to actually switch the tracks because right now they're on the right side and I didn't actually put them back into the left position last time I was here so let's take care of that real quick there we go the last time we were here we got the combination from the end of the right side track on that other side of that wall that was in the revolving hut room but I didn't bother looking at this at the time because it would have just been a waste of time and it wouldn't have exactly been very optimal and we wouldn't have been able to really take advantage of what this unlocked, so yeah. I'm putting it off until now. Okay, we've reached the end of the line and now we can enter the combination which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. There we go. And we've got a new puzzle to solve here. We got a bunch of colors on the left. We got some buttons here on the right. And it looks like those only control the white square there. Oh, but this changes the colors. So if I were to mess around with this... Okay, so we got the green one is now working. So yeah, we can't control them from here. We can only control them from this doohickey right here. So, what do we do with this? I mean, we've been gathering up clues for a while, but what clues have we found that correspond with this thing? Well, if you remember all the way back when we first visited the foyer building, there was that room with all those square, um, I don't want to call them panels, but I guess they kind of are, and they had these rivets on them. Some of them were on the outside, and some of them were inside a square um, in the middle. So... Perhaps what we need to do is set a number of rivets for the outside and inside of each of those panels as they correspond with the color that we saw when we pressed the button. Remember we saw a blue one and we saw, well cyan one I should say, we saw a green one and a red one. So let me go back to white first and let's just set that back to zero because we don't really need to worry about that. And the right side was two. There you go. All right, so let's tackle red first. Red had nine on the inside. And four on the outside. And there you go. Let's change it to, is that green or is that another color? I think that is green. Green had nine on the inside and six on the outside. I think that's, yeah, that's six, okay. All right, looking good. And finally, we have cyan. Not blue, cyan. I guess that's technically purple, but the color came out a little weird. And let's see, for the outside, for cyan, we've got eight. And we've got four. Looking good, all right. So let's go ahead and head back to the foyer area and check our work, see if the rivets now work. Well, the panels, not, not the rivets. The rivets by themselves don't do anything. You know what I mean. Okay, let's go through these awesome looking doors once again and into, not there, this room. 
Alright, so let's start over here. Does it work? It does! Okay, so it opened up, and now we can set some shapes in here. So what do we do with this? Well, remember, around the cavern here, we've been collecting clues for this puzzle. We've been seeing various shapes in the water and stuff on these uh, little platforms. And those are supposed to be what you enter into these panels. The red one we saw at the end of that train that we took out of the glass maze that went into the sloping pipe area near the hydroelectric plant. We saw it near the elevator maze area from the view that we were able to look at through that, that spot. And it looks like this. So that's for that one. The cyan one was the apple core that we saw. I think it was right outside the boathouse. And finally the green one we saw in the rotating hut area and it looked like a fat raindrop. Now, as I mentioned earlier, all of these connect to these purple wires. And I noted that these wires ran all the way over here to this um, device at the very end of the path here. So let's see if it now works. It does, and it seems to rotate the bridge 90 degrees. So let's cross over here and see what we can find. It doesn't seem like there's anything else to do just another lever to control the bridge with but I want to see what's here well we can place some stuff in here and we do happen to have what we need for this the four pieces and these pieces connect these wires here which is pretty nifty all right Let's go over to this side and see what we can find. Boarded up areas here we can't get to. And we got a wooden floor. And the artifact that we've been looking at, or at least it seems like it, it's round. And it's got some symbols on it that uh, Zatias was and Kalos were telling us about. We can't do anything with that. Can we put our skeleton key into this? We can. And there's some sort of puzzle here where we get to set some uh, little semicircles, or semi ellipses, I guess you could say. But we have not seen any clues that pertain to this anywhere around the cavern, so I'm just going to leave it alone for now. Um, nothing else to check out unless we can close the door, but we can't. Um, what's down here? Another key to put in there. Some barred window, but we can't see anything through there. Alright, well let's go in here and see what we've got. It looks like this is a map of the entire foyer area. And right now we're standing in that spot. But that doesn't work either. Neither does that. Okay. Okay, can we press this button now that that's down? Whoa! Okay, so we just fell through some kind of trap door. Well, I guess we've got no option but to bang on this. I mean, we can't go anywhere. We can also bang on this thing. Hey! Okay. 
جو آت می توت می Hey, I need that to get out of here. تو بات هم می تاکم بی تفو کمین واتیم تیو می فایا تیه هات دوم می فی زی یو چی توم اکامی Hmm یه بول فاسو فی باسو Okay. Well, thankfully we can actually escape, so that's good. I guess that's what that room was that we were trying to look at from down here. But she took our swipe card! That wasn't very nice. What in the world? It sounds like it's about to explode. Okay. Well, she took our swipe card, but she gave us a coin of some sort. And there she is, over there, in an area that we can't get to. Hmm. At least it has got one of those caution signs. And we can't turn this any further this way. Alright, well let's go ahead and head back. So yeah, where can we use this coin? Is there a place around Rem where we can use coins? Well, actually, there is. There's one spot left where we haven't been able to use anything. Do you remember where it was? That's right, it's that spot over by the elevator uh, maze. Where you could uh, fit something into a slot. And a coin seems like the ideal object to put in there. So, right now, I'm going to head all the way back to the elevator uh, labyrinth and put this coin in there and see what we get. Because remember, down below the coin slot, we have that little blue screen thing that wasn't able to show us anything before. But maybe with this in it, it will actually work. Alright, one more, I believe. And let's head back up to level 2 and go to the elevator cavern. Good news about this is I don't think we'll really have to do a lot of riding around since all we need is over there by elevator A. Yeah, it's just right over here. So let's just ride up and then put the coin in the slot. Here it is. It fits. Okay, so let's see what that did. Did that accomplish anything? One would hope so. There we go. What have we got in here? It looks to be the solution to that curve puzzle. Alright, hope you remember that, because we're going to need to input it into that thing all the way back at the very end, and I just went back up when I needed to stay down. Whoops. There I go again, making things even more complicated. We don't need to go back up, we need to go through here to go back up. I will say this one thing, I kind of wish there was a shortcut that you could take to bypass all this once you've solved it. That would be nice. But instead, we have to do this over and over and over again.
Alright, so now we just need to backtrack and retrace our steps all the way back to the foyer area again. And this way. Here we are. And hopefully, inputting this uh, pattern into that 3x3 three three grid will unlock the artifacts. The thing, though, is that we don't really know um, what she's planning to do with our keycard, because we need our keycard to operate the tram. You know, maybe she's allowing us to take a picture of the artifact, and maybe once we've done that she'll let us free or something like that. I mean, she didn't seem hostile, so... She seems like she's friendly enough and that she's not here to harm us or anything, or keep us hostage. Although the trap door and all that stuff was a little bit overdramatic, just saying. Alright, let's get off here. I still love this area, it's just got such nice atmosphere. Still wish I could check out whatever's on that side. I mean, it looks like there's an exit over there. And how in the world did she do that anyway? I mean, there's no way to rotate the bridge that way, is there? Okay. There. This kind of reminds me of the end puzzle for Mist 3 on uh, Orion, where you had to put all those curva, or those lights in the curved things to make the symbols and whatnot. Okay, so let's see if this works. It did! Alright, let's take the artifact with us. And now we can go back to the arrival center to take the picture. So this is going to be the last time we see all this stuff, so now's your chance to say goodbye for pretty much forever. We had a lot of fun times here. I gotta admit, when it comes to uh, puzzles for Rem, this game and also the next game have, at least in my opinion, some of the most memorable locations. I think it's just mainly the variety that helps with that. The first game just had... Uh, a lot of that industrial complex feeling type stuff, and it just kind of got a little stale after a while. I mean, the first game had a very nice integrative feel to it, but I, f I think the environments here are way more interesting. I mean, I'll always remember going back and forth down the underground cavern and the railway system and all that. But I'll give you more of my thoughts once we finish the game and get to the actual ending. That's another thing I've been saying a lot of lately. I keep saying actual. I need to stop doing that. Okay, that should be it, so let's just go up the ladder. And let's go back through the elevators one more time. One more time! Ah, uh, remember the days when we had to solve this math puzzle to even get through the Golden Door? Ah, those were the days, man. Those were the days. And then when I commented on the caution sign, we were like, Hey, they put a caution sign. <laughs> yep, that was fun. The good news is, is that we don't actually have to do a lot of elevator riding around. We just need to go to elevator A and ride it up. Oops, not there. We've already taken care of that. Alright, so let's go back through the revolving door building. Not through the actual door, but just this, uh... The building with the rotating cylinder. And back to the arrival center. which should be through here. 
This is where it all started, wasn't it? We got off the tram. We talked about the compass and stuff here. We went up this ladder, and then we were looking at everything for the first time and admiring that 800 by 600 resolution. Ah, good old memories. All right. So let's put the artifact into the little slot here. I find it hilarious that um, Zatias and Kalos had built this entire contraption but didn't have the time to actually look for the artifact. Okay. I'm not going to collect the artifact yet because I think there's a bug involving that that can happen if you do that. Instead, I'm just going to put the picture in here for now. Hello, you've made it. You found the artifact. Thank you. Because of your help, You're welcome. it is possible to continue exploring REM. When this video is over, please take the picture out. Then you will be able to activate the mechanism to lift your vehicle to a higher level. Please bring the photo of the artifact to my brother Zatias. He will be able to decipher it. Have a good return trip. Thanks. Okay, so we got the picture. Uh, let's go ahead and get the artifact. I think now it's safe to get it. Good, okay, we've got both. And let's raise our tram. I keep turning myself around. Here we go. I guess we get a nice little window there. And we can also go over here. I guess we just need to put the artifact here for the lady in red. Apparently she, uh, or Zatias and Kalos have built this contraption for us. And we get our keycard back. So yay. And wow, that thing is big. All right. I guess she's in that passage that we could see from the arrival center back where the camera area is. But we got our swipe card back, which means that we can leave Rem with the photo intact. We've accomplished our mission, we can now go home and we can deliver this to Zatias and Kalos. And I need to actually get inside, which requires swiping, so let's do that. There we go. And we can take the track out of here. So that is pretty much it for Rem 2. I hope it's been fun to watch. I really enjoyed playing through this game, and it was certainly a challenging LP to do with all the puzzles and clues to remember and notes to look at and everything, but I think it ended up turning out alright. It was definitely a game that I enjoyed more than the first one. Um, then again, I can pretty much just say that about all of the sequels. <clears throat> and there's several reasons for this. The graphics definitely took a step up. Um, the increased resolution really helped a lot. The lighting effects were very nice. I mean, they weren't exactly the state-of-the-art type, you know, sort of thing that you see in games nowadays. But for a one-man project, this is a very impressive effort, once again. And the sheer amount of puzzles that you have to solve in this game, while it's overwhelming, it was definitely very, very entertaining, and it kept me occupied for hours and hours on end. If there's only one complaint I have about this game, it's that some of the puzzles are a little devious, like the Crystal Cavern stuff and all that, but even those, I don't really think they were all that bad. And holy cow, look at all these rail tracks. Where did all these go? I'm asking that honestly. I mean, I don't even know, because the other games don't even get into this. Well, maybe that's future Rim game fodder. 
but yeah, the just the graphics and the atmosphere, I thought they were a huge step up, and that's kind of, like I said earlier, what made the game so memorable for me. Again, it doesn't have a plot, but I really don't think that that's the game's strength. It doesn't need a plot, it just, the puzzles were entertaining in and of themselves. The only downside to that was that there really isn't that much of a payoff in the end. I did enjoy seeing the appearances by the Red Lady throughout the uh, the game. Because first, I mean, they were kind of a little creepy and a little bit startling. But other than that, they didn't really follow up with it much except for the whole trading of items toward the end, and that was just kind of it. I wish they had done more of that and actually had a bigger payoff for solving all these puzzles, but... It's okay. I mean, I still enjoyed the game nonetheless. It's just that a, a proper story would give more motivation to get through everything. But I will say, solving those puzzles can be very, very, very satisfying. In the meantime, though, we've got something to deliver to Zatias and Kalos, and you guessed it, we will follow that up in Rem 3. So I'd like to thank you guys for watching once again. I really appreciate your support throughout the series, your comments, everything. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button, and I will see you guys on the flip side. Oh, hello. It's nice to see you again. You have found the artifact and were able to take a picture of it. I will go to work right away and will try to decipher the symbol. I hope I can count on you on the next trip to Rem. Good luck.